and the first uh, student, Nechama Yafe, better known as Nahumi. Nahumi. Thank you all for coming. Uh, family, do you have it? Yes. yes. Good. Yes. <laughs> uh, family, friends, um, the president of the university, the former Menachem Megiddo and Hanoch and Menachem Mezeson. Your presence really honors us and stresses me. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a few weeks ago I was in New York uh, with uh, by Shlomit Panchkuber, uh, Osman, Osman Adam, Adam and I, if you remember from last year, and uh, we were standing in Shabbat together uh, with some Israeli friends, and, <coughs> and one of them uh, said, we were sitting on the Shabbat table, and uh, one of them said something about a uh, Marwan Machul, and I, I commented something. So uh, I don't even remember what I told him. So this guy gave me this nasty look and asked me, are you truly ultra-Orthodox? I said, yes, I'm uh, raised and born. So I was like, for God's sake, what do you have to do with my one machol? I don't even know about him. So Shlomit and I uh, looked at each other and simultaneously said, Hoffman. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up in a Hasidic family and lived in Yerushalayim most of my life. And when I decided to go to university, which was a very uh, stressful uh, decision, I tried to come in, uh, to, to come, I reduce my ang anxiety by telling myself that it's not going to be such a strange wo world. After all, uh, I live in Jerusalem, which is a mixed city. I see the seculars uh, on the street, in the mall. I'm a very open-minded person. I read literature. I sneak in some movies. I even know some uh, Goishi music. I know other songs, you know. It's not going to be such a strange world. Well, little did I know. I arrived to the mountain and hit here reality. And I realized I don't even have the same language as the other students. I was literally missing words to explain people my world. I couldn't, I couldn't get across the message. They all spoke Israeli. It turned out I was speaking Haredit. It's close, but it's not the same. And I was very, very lost. I even at a time thought to, to just leave. And then I was very, very fortunate. I felt like I feel like I have a special schus to get into Hoffman. Hoffman was my opportunity and chance to understand the Israeli society, and more than this, to be a part of it. I realize what, what I'm describing is my own personal journey, but from speaking to other people, many of us feel very much the same. In many ways, we are stranger to each strangers to each other. The Israeli society is divided, communities are separated and sti stigmatized. So we tell ourselves that we know them, but this is an illusion. We really don't. And normally we don't have a chance to discover we wrong. The university was my opportunity to realize I don't know the Israeli society. And Hoffman was my opportunity to do something about it. Uh, in my native term in our terminology, Hoffman for me was a yeshiva. I know you have a school in Perth, uh, Commerce School, but you also have a small yeshiva in one of the mountains of Yerushalayim, <coughs> in the Hebrew University. It's the Hoffman yeshiva. <laughs> and if I try to compare this yeshiva to any other yeshiva, what comes to my mind is the uh, yeshiva Shem Ve'eger. Uh, I don't know if you know, you heard of it, but Yeshiva Shem Ve'ever was a universal yeshiva many, many years ago that Avraham Avini went to learn there. And when Rivka had an inner struggle, you know, you remember this story? So she went to consult in the Yeshiva of Shem Ve'ever, and Yaakov Avini went to learn there for 14 years. There's a historical debate where the yeshiva was located and what exactly they were learning, but what strikes me is the name of the yeshiva, Yeshiva Shem Ve'ever which really means name, Shem is name, and ever mean opposed or across side, like Me'ever, Ranal, Yeshua, Votenu, across the river, right? Uh, to call something by its name, it's to relate to it. It's to identify it. I think this corresponds <coughs> exactly to what we are doing in Hoffman. In Hoffman, we have the courage to look at reality and think and to call them by their name. 
In Hoffman, we try to understand the ever, the cross inside, the other segments and communities of the Israeli society. We even try sometimes mentally to cross the street and look from the other side how it feels and how it looks. In Shivat Hoffman, we try to tear apart our alienation, alienation to the other society, Israeli society and citizens and group. In Hoffman, we call it by name. We argue, we care, we truly care. I feel privileged to have this great opportunity, a place where I can get closer to other Israeli groups and sectors and community. An opportunity to get people I didn't mm -hmm. know, like Marwan Mahul, like Arav Rimon, like uh, Ziva no uh, Noi, so many, so many other guests that I didn't even know I don't know. I want to thank Harry and Sylvia for this really rare opportunity. I feel like I got a present, a, present, a personal present, to get to know the Israeli side, side, society and to go get to know myself better. Um, I want to wish you a lot of nachas from his family, a few bright and inspiring great great chance. I want to wish you nachas from you, all your business, and mainly from your yeshiva graduate here in Hoffman. Chanoch, uh, I want to thank you for the inspiration you give us, the special stories and insights you share with us, and the young spirit you bring along. I really feel it's something to live up to, of Inzgi you know? <laughs> <laughs> Amalia, for the endless thoughts, time you put in the, book, the book program, the wisdom, the sensitivity, the you leadership, the balance you're always trying to keep, and the love you embrace us with, like children. To Yosefa, to the graceful way you, you handle us for the great ideas you always come up with, for the very personal touch you relate to each single one of us. To Litan, the true Eshet Chaim, <laughs> that always <laughs> looks like it happens. It's just like smooth, everything happens, but there's someone behind it, and it's Litan. She never misses a detail, always on top of things, and she does it so calmly, it's like stressing. To Menachem and Sasson, and to Menachem Megiddo, the present president and the former president for coming and being here with us today. And finally to my colleagues, the present in the past and in the future, for being such an important part of my personal journey, for talking to me all the week from Sunday to Sunday, I have a conversation with you. I know you're not physically there, but you still answering such good questions, you know, <laughs> and answers. I want to wish us all luck. May we all publish many articles. May they all get into AAA journals. Uh, and may we all continue to care. May we all continue to fight the alienation, the inner, the outer. And may we all have the courage to call reality by its name. message is from another graduate, Saleh Hawalet. You ready? Well, good evening. Um, the Hoffman family, the Hoffman staff, former and uh, present presidents, my colleagues, good evening and uh, welcome. Um, so I, I wasn't quite sure of what should I say or what should I told, tell you today. And uh, I figured uh, that the best thing would, would be is actually to tell you a Hoffman story, my story, and the story of each one of us, the seventh cohort that are about, are about to finish in the last three years. So um, four years ago, I got an invitation to come to an interview for this program the Harry and Sylvia Hoffman Leadership and Responsibility Program. I did know at that time that the focus of this program is unique and different from other PhD fellowships 
programs. Instead of just looking into our grades and academic achievements, we were asked to talk about our contribution to the society we live in and our actually real life beyond the academic life. But don't, do not get me wrong, actually actual real achievements or academic achievements were not neglected at all. And so um, at the interview I met Amalia for the first time, among of course other uh, interview committee members, asking me about my work, my research, my volunteering. To tell you the truth, actually I came to that interview doing already some uh, volunteering that might be called, might be and might be not called a project, but still I wasn't uh, that sure that uh, I, I fit actually the requirements of the program or not. Um, a few weeks later, I got a phone call from Nital telling me the good news. You're in. Congratulations. You'll be receiving an email with the details about the next year meetings, and I was like, okay, meetings, <laughs> schedule, we'll see about it. At that point, I didn't know what to expect, what are these meetings about, and mostly who are the people that I'll be meeting with. <coughs> Coming from Hadassah, for those uh, who don't know, it's the Hebrew University Medical Campus. All I had in mind is everything about the human body, structure, physiology, and diseases. Cancer, of course, as being my main research focus. And fast enough, I realized that this is not the dictionary I will need around here. Another dictionary is needed. It's the Harat Sufim dictionary. <laughs> Believe me, it's quite different. And uh, to be honest with you, I, sometimes I didn't even understand the world. And gentrificatia is extremely a uh, good example for that. Um, for me, this was already an achievement, meeting other people, discussing new stuff, not mentioning any more DNA, proteins, or even cancer that uh, Menachem Ben Sasson already mentioned today. I, I, I thought that you are coming from Adasa too. <laughs> instead, we talk about, instead we talked actually about daily issues in the Israeli society, sadly, and, and uh, not sadly, in quiet and not quiet days as well. Too fast. I found myself waiting, actually, for these Sundays in which I moved to our film from Odessa. I flipped somehow the CD inside my brain, and I didn't, tell, I didn't talk anymore about molecular biology. Life was not that bright all the time, as we had our conflicts inside the group while dealing with hot topics, such as the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, such as the structure of the Israeli society, or even dealing with some kind of problematic guests that we had over the years. These conflicts did not tear us apart, as we are a highly heterogeneous group. Heterogeneous is coming from Hadassah, not from the Arab Sufi Dictionary. <laughs> Instead, we became stronger and more united, first of all, thanks to Amalia. But as we learned together how to listen, respect, argue, and put some limits whenever is needed. For me, these three years can be divided into three, three main steps. The first step was actually to understand what leadership and responsibility means. The second was looking for such leaders in our society and having them to come to you to tell us the story of their success and also their failure. And finally, to bec become ones, to become somehow leaders and try to deal with the highly complex issues of our close environment. Meanwhile, each one of us did his part of making this world a better place, by volunteering, of course, in different places, by building new programs, or by looking for answers, along with others for problems around us. And of course, they did their, their PhD. Okay? <laughs> uh, we had successful moments, but faced some failures as well. We learned from each other and listened to each other's stories to improve our own work and experience. I feel extremely grateful for getting the opportunity to be one of this community, the Hoffman community. I feel extremely grateful for this uni unique PhD experience that is way beyond just doing some research. I feel really grateful for meeting you guys, the Hoffman staff, the Hoffman colleagues, the Hoffman family over the years, and for being a real Hoffman. 
And as Amalia said, on the very first meeting, once a Hoffman, always a Hoffman. So, thank you, Amalia, Hanoch, Roy, who is not here today with us, Yusefa and Vital for believing actually in me and in each one of us and picking us to be on this program. Thank you, dear Harry, Sylvia, and the Hoffman family for making it possible for all of this to happen. Thank you, Menachem Ben Sasson, Menachem Medidor, Hanok Gottfreund again, past and uh, former and present presidents of the Hebrew University for being with us today and for uh, building such a program for a highly uh, 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 qualified PhD students. And thank you all for being here with us today. Um, now is the time to you to meet the other classmates of the class of 2013 to 2016. Uh, my colleagues will need to excuse me. If you don't like the notes I put in the uh, uh, presentation, we'll see after that. Thank 